about the best Canadian real estate investment trust for dividend income. Now, many of you are aware that Rio Can, the real estate investment trust, my favorite Canadian REIT, is one of the largest holdings in my six-figure dividend stock portfolio. But now that I got that position filled, I figured maybe I should diversify a little more. What companies are actually performing well in this pandemic? And I did a side-by-side -side comparison of the top weighted Canadian REITs in the Vanguard Canadian Real Estate Investment Trust ETF. And oh my God, I got to stop saying, I got to make these into acronyms. Or so this is going to get really confusing. But nonetheless, I did a side by side quick overview for you guys, and then we're going to deep dive down into these. And starting from the left being the top weighted holdings in that ETF, starting off with CAR.UN, primarily a residential focused REIT, is still receiving 98% of their total rents and are actually having pretty stable revenues through this entire pandemic. Now, the best performer of the bunch by far has been CRT.UN, which is currently receiving 98.9% .9 of their rent. And that is due to the fact that they are highly focused on logistics with companies like Amazon is some of their tenants. Now taking a look, we got Rio Can, one that I've broken down way too many times. Now they're receiving 94% of their rents in this pandemic here, guys. And they still have pretty stable revenues with a little bit of a drop off. But as I told you guys, that was primarily related to write downs, not actually directly reflecting their funds from operation that pay those juicy dividend yields. Next to that, we got AP.UN, which is bar none the worst performer in this pandemic when we're talking about these top weighted real estate investment trust only receiving 93% of their total rents and then finally we got one that many of you asked me about very relatable to Rio Can SRU.UN still receiving 95% of their total rents slightly better than Rio Can but we're going to deep dive down in and figure out why that is so in the clarity of my transparency all the homework I do for you smash that like button and let's jump right So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the Vanguard Canadian Capped Read Index, ticker VRE.TO, and we're going to break down the top weighted holdings. Now, most people like to get their Canadian real estate exposure through these ETFs, but during these tumultuous times, guys, I always recommend handpicking the best ones because the worst performers are going to drag down this entire ETF. As we can see, the top 10 holdings are made up of 83% of the total assets. So to kick this off, we're going to start with the largest weighting being Canadian Apartment properties making up 15.72% of the total assets of the ETF. Now this one primarily focused in residential real estate has been one of the safest sectors of the real estate market during this crash here guys and considering this company is only trading down roughly 24.5% but on a 10 year basis is trading up roughly if I can get this to line up here about 200% which is just staggering. People are usually willing to overlook the lower yield of 3.12% to try and get that kind of capital gain performance, but I really only look at REITs for the income specifically. And we're going to take a look at the dividend performance in a sec. But one of my biggest concerns with this REIT when I was looking at it was the exposure to colleges and the residential units they rent to students. But clearly the diversification of their assets protected them against that as they still were able to receive 98% of their total rents. And just taking a look, you do get a little bit of global exposure in here as well, because they do have some exposure to Europe with the Netherlands here, guys. And taking a look, at these dividends when you're starting with such a low yield you would hope to be getting dividend increases over time and fortunately we have seen some but not to the level that i would hope because it looked like they were trying to do this almost every year with the last one being in 2019 the second month in and the one before that being in 2018 we haven't seen one for almost two years now which is a slight concern but that is probably directly related to again the pandemic we are experiencing now taking a look at the next read here guys and we are going to skip over the first service corp we are not going to look at anything that deals with mortgages. We just want direct exposure to real estate. So we're going to skip down to this Granite Real Estate Investment Trust, which by far has been one of the best performers this year and actually in the Canadian real estate market when we're talking about the higher market cap companies, because I don't like buying lower weighted uh, real estate companies because I feel like you get more protection and scale here. But taking a look at this one, guys, it has been unbelievable considering it's a relatively newer rate. It is trading up 
96% in just over five years, paying a 3.82% dividend yield today, a PE of 11. Guys, why is this thing trading up so high? Well, this one is highly exposed to logistics, baby, which is one of the most exploding markets right now. Even though you get security with residential, which is what makes uh, the Canadian Apartment Properties Trust so attractive, this one gets the best of both worlds. You're getting a higher dividend yield and you're getting a growing real estate sector because if we take a look at their top 10 tenants here, guys, you got Magna, you got Amazon being a US company here, guys, like unbelievable Wayfair, RICOH. And just taking a look, it is giving you some global diversification with the US, Canada here, Europe. Like this is some pretty incredible stuff, making it even seem pretty attractive to me to be on a buy list. It is really hard to get a growing REIT along with a higher starting yield. Now we're not talking about huge yields. We're going to see bigger ones moving forward, but still incredible, incredible stuff in a very interesting sector of the market right now. And taking a look at the dividends, this one, however, unlike the rest we are going to go through has not stopped growing, hasn't been that hard hit by the pandemic, is still receiving 98% of their total rents. In 2018, they did one fairly large dividend increase. We saw another one going into 2020. And it wouldn't surprise me seeing another one going into 2021 because this company actually prides themselves on how often they have been increasing their dividend. Now, moving into one that you all know I love with an utter passion, we got to talk about Rio Can being my largest investment in the real estate sector, currently paying a 9.72% dividend yield, seeing a bit of a ding on their rents, of course, only getting a receivable of about 93%. I think this one, along with another one we're going to take a look at, is getting hit exceptionally hard because people think these are heavily exposed to malls. Just taking a look, guys, they have some pretty incredible development projects is what led me into this company because even though once we take a look at their dividends, they haven't been doing as many increases, the starting yield is absolutely absurd. And I do believe the management has done an incredible job through this pandemic. And considering about 75 to 80% of their exposure is to essential services like LCBOs, Sobeys, like Food Store Shoppers Drug Mart. I mean, it's got an underlying stability behind it where it's only being affected by like clothing stores. And some of their minor exposure to obviously companies that are getting dinged and likely to go bankrupt through this. But I believe they're going to be able to transition away from that as they begin to focus more on residential, which is what makes it so attractive to me because I do believe in the future, not only are we going to get a returning stock price, but we should also likely begin to see dividend increases as that residential income starts pouring in. And just taking a look at the dividend on that note, guys, we've had the last increase was back in 2017, and we actually have had zero cuts since the pandemic has taken place. So we are getting some resiliency here, but these are some of the worst performers on this top weighted index, which to me as a value investor, see some pretty decent discounts here. And at the end of this, guys, I'm going to talk more about my personal opinions on these companies, but let's move in to Allied Properties Real Estate Investment Trust here, guys, being one of the worst performers of the top weightings in that Vanguard ETF. And because they make up such a huge weighting and it's down 44%, and we're taking a look at Allied Properties makes up an 8.72% weighting, we can imagine that this one is dragging down this ETF pretty drastically here, but paying out a 5% yield, is this one worth buying? Why? Why is it trading down so much? Well, this one is highly focused primarily on office space. Office rental units in the perspective of individual investors and retail investors, guys, they don't like that because everybody is learning to work from home, though I don't think that's going to be a permanent stance moving into the future. Right now, it seems to be the general sediment amongst investors. So this one is by far getting hit the hardest. Kind of have to go into their investor relation to see all of their office space buildings, which again, I don't think they present as cleanly as they could as again, we take a look at the rental portfolio. This is kind of what we get to see. And taking a look at the dividends on this one, guys, I'm actually kind of impressed to see such a horrible stock performance to see some pretty good resilience in their dividend here, at which they haven't done any cuts. And we can see that they've actually increased it as of early as going into 2020 here. Now, this could be seen as some discounts because as well, they are still collecting about 93% of their rents. So there might be some good signs that, you know, maybe office uh, units aren't actually that bad and it could just be public sentiment, making some investors think this, this could be trading at a bit of a discount, not one of my favorites favorites personally, but still it's got some good underlying performance here, guys. And now moving in to the last one, a lot of you guys keep telling me, what do you think about RSRU.N? Now it trades at the bottom weighting of this ETF and I didn't want to get into HR. It's too plain. Collier International, these are more like financial groups with first capital realty. They're not actual real estate investment trusts. So I'm kind of just throwing those aside to kind of pick the ones that I think are most important to recognize. And yes, guys, this one is so similar to Rio Cam because a lot of people think this is heavy exposed to malls and retail-based properties. And yes, though they are, they follow a very similar suit to Rio 
Cam paying out an 8.59% dividend yield. And just taking a look at their websites, they, they have a very similar presentation to what we would expect out of these kind of REITs. But where the most impressive thing comes in, again, very similar to Rio Can, you know, their exposure to Loblaws, Lowe's, 50% of their rents from strong, creditworthy, and open essential services. Now, this is a slight concern to me because, again, Rio Can has a higher exposure to these kind of clients, whereas theirs are a little bit lower weighting. And just like a Rio Can, guys, these two things are like symbiotic here because they as well are trying to get into residential units, currently getting into 16,500 uh, basically units for rent. Some pretty incredible stuff because this all comes down to management. And in these crazy times, this is exactly what I want to see. And I could put this next to Rio Can. The only reason I chose Rio Can over this guy was purely because of their exposure and their concentration of where the real estate is, where Smart Centers is a little bit diversified. They're a little bit pushed out into a bunch of different sectors of the Canadian real estate markets. Rio Can is just heavy driven in Toronto and they have some pretty premium properties that I want to see the upside potential from. Now, now that's not saying that SRU is any worse by any means. They've had a slight increase by only about 1% on their actual rents collected. So they are doing a little bit of a hair better than Rio Can. But again, it depends on what you're after here, guys, just for the starting yield difference when you're talking about 8.59% against Rio Can's 9.7%. And again, very similar charts. And also considering Rio Can has had a longer history being on the public markets, you're getting a little bit more of a bonus, I think, picking up Rio Can at these levels. Overall, they all have their pros and cons. I'm just doing a general overview. You guys can deep dive down in and figure out what ones would best suit your portfolio. But I am leading in the direction of picking up another Canadian REITs. One of the ones that we obviously just mentioned, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I still wouldn't mind getting a little bit more exposure. And the one that fascinates me by far the most has to be Granite Real Estate Investment Trust. It has been the top performer since this pandemic has taken place. It has the highest yield of the best capital gain returning REITs in Canada and the top weightings, of course. We're not talking about small cap REITs here, guys. And this one trades about $4.4 billion, which is actually fairly close to Rio Can sitting at $4.71 billion here. And this one would just give me more exposure to a part of the market that is truly growing when we're talking about logistics. Let me know in the comment section below if you would like me to do a full performance of this company here, guys, because I'm, I'm itching at it. It's, it's pulling me in, baby. I might have to add it. Uh, to my portfolio, but we'll see if, as I do more research, what I can dig up. But if I was just beginning to invest, a lot of people would push you into ETFs, but I got a few other people that agree with this sentiment that if you are buying highly focused ETFs in individual sectors of the market in these current times, it is not wise to just be throwing blind money at these things. Now, if we're talking about something like a QQQ that represents the NASDAQ 100, you know, the top performing kind of tech companies, I, I would be fine with that. If we're talking about like an S&P 500 index, I would be fine with that as well. But when it comes to things like the REIT sector, the oil sector, you know, entertainment sector, all of that stuff, I think you should really hand select those companies. We can see that the VRE is trading down roughly 25 or 30%, but you really don't want that exposure, in my opinion, to something like an allied, which keeps dragging the entire index down. Whereas you could literally just pick the top three weightings, in my opinion, being the Canadian apartments, you could just pick up Granite Real Estate Investment Trust and then get Rio Can for a little bit of income or something like SRU, the smart centers. And not only would you be avoiding the expense ratio of point three, five, you would be getting a way better yield than 6.62% or anything. You might be getting close to that yield because once you kind of balance out the fact that cars only paying out a 3.2%, you know, that GRT is only paying out a 3.8, you'll probably get roughly the same balance, but in the bonus of things, you're not getting that expense ratio. In light of all of this, I would love to know what you guys think in that comment section below. Let me know if I should do one on the US REITs as well. What ones are you holding specifically? Now, the reason I focus on large cap Canadian REITs, because a lot of people throw small caps at me. I'm not nearly as appealed toward them because usually they're a lot more volatile. They don't come with the stability of large caps and being a long-term investor, even though people say small caps can grow faster, I'm looking for reliable, stable dividends, guys. And I know I can get that out of the REITs we just looked at. So let me know what are your favorites is I, I really want to add that logistics company to my portfolio. So I will do a little bit more deep diving for you and maybe make a specific video about it. But anyways, stay cool, stay awesome. And I look forward to catching you guys tomorrow.